There are a lot of different names for describing groin pain and injuries, and this can be pretty confusing because multiple of the diagnoses mean the same thing, and then some of the diagnoses don't really tell you what's going on. Like, who is Gilmore and why do we want to know about his groin? So in this video, we'll talk about how all of these diagnoses were consolidated into just four different diagnoses for groin pain in athletes, and we'll also talk about the treatment directions for each one of them. The first diagnosis is adductor-related groin pain, and as the name suggests, it's pain attributed to the adductor muscles, which are on the inside part of the thigh. And so for the diagnosis, the location, as well as pain with adduction of the leg, will give us the diagnosis. Adductor-related groin pain is common in sports that require a lot of quick cutting motions, so we can think of this as like soccer, football, or hockey. And the reason for this is because at push-off, typically the adductor muscles are lengthened, and then as we cut in a different direction, the adductor muscles have to contract from a lengthened position, which can lead to some irritation. When creating a rehab program for adductor-related groin pain, the key is to find a load that is tolerated and then gradually build up from there. Typically, isometric exercises are the least irritating, and that's because we have a lot of control over both the load as well as the position that we're loading the adductor muscle group in. For an isometric contraction for those adductor muscles, we're going to squeeze our legs together. So initially we want to start with our legs closer together, and then the progression is to have our legs further apart, which increases the length of those adductor muscles, which makes them work a little bit harder. So initially you might start with a small little ball or something like that to push and hold, typically held for 30 to 45 seconds, and then repeat it for three to five reps. And then we'll increase the object that we're using for resistance, so that that way we're increasing the range of motion that we're contracting those muscles at. The next step is to load the adductors with some movement. And there are a variety of different exercises that we can do here, and it really depends on our tolerance to loading as well as the equipment that's available to us. One way that we can do this is with an exercise band. Generally, when we perform these, we wanna perform them over six to eight seconds, so they're a very slow contraction at first. And so with an exercise band or a cable machine, We'll start with our leg a little bit further out from us and then gradually build it in so we're squeezing those legs together and then slowly back to that original starting position. Another option is to do a body weight version, either using a chair or a bench. Start off by placing your knee on the chair and then slowly lifting your hips up off the ground until you're squeezing your legs together and then slowly back down to the ground. To progress this exercise, we can then increase the lever by having only our foot on the chair and then repeating the same thing, slowly lifting our hips up off the ground and then slowly returning back down to the ground. The next diagnosis is iliopsoas related groin pain, which is worse with resisted hip flexion. And these are more common in sports that require sprinting because of the demands on the hip flexor when driving the hip up. Again, typically rehab for iliopsoas related groin pain can start with an isometric exercise. So start by lying on your back and then use your hands to push against your knee and hold this position for 30 to 45 seconds, resisting bringing your knee up towards your chest, which will engage that iliopsoas muscle. A simple progression is to sit on the ground and then lift our leg up as high as we can go. The nice thing about this variation is that we can move our leg around so we can challenge the hip flexor muscles in a couple of different planes. So, for example, if we look at how the orientation of the actual hip flexor muscle is, it's actually at an angle. And so we can actually bring our leg out just a little bit and challenge the hip flexor muscles in maybe a better orientation. And then we can add some movement to this exercise. So we can lean back just a little bit and then slowly bring our knees up towards our chest and then extend them back out. Additionally, we can add some load by using either an exercise band or something like that to just further increase the load on those hip flexor muscles. Inguinal-related groin pain is the third diagnosis, and luckily the fourth one isn't gonna require any exercise bands because we already got a lot going on here. But inguinal-related groin pain is gonna present as pain around this area, and that's because that's where the abdominal muscles actually attach. And so for a little bit better orientation, if we look at the hip flexor muscles, they're much closer to the spine, and then the abdominal muscles are obviously going to be in the front of the torso. And this is more common in overhead athletes or rotational athletes. And this is because if we look at throwing something or if we're swinging either a bat or a golf club, that as we rotate, the abdominal muscles are going to be lengthened. And then again, when we try to generate force from that position, those abdominal muscles are being asked to contract from a lengthened state, which again can cause some irritation. And therefore the rehab approach for inguinal related groin pain is gonna be focused a little bit more on the core than it is on those adductor muscles. So when it comes to core exercise, there are a variety that we can choose from, but dead bugs are probably one of the better ones for this condition. And so start by lying on your back with your arms and your legs up in the air. And then to start with, Start by slowly flexing those arms up overhead, which is going to challenge those abdominal muscles because we're trying to keep that low back still and not let it extend as we bring those arms back. 
Once that's tolerated, then we can switch to doing opposite arm and opposite leg. And so when we're in this position, the other side is going to remain still, but then we're going to slowly flex the arm and then drop our leg down towards the ground and then back up to that starting position. Obviously, we could do both sides just to challenge the abdominal muscles on both sides. Then once that's tolerated, then we can start to work on some leg lowers, which is really going to challenge those abdominal muscles to contract as we slowly lower our legs down towards the ground. To start incorporating some more movement in the torso, chops and lifts are phenomenal exercises for this purpose. For the lift, start with an exercise band or a cable anchored low, and then we're going to bring our arms up and across our body, and then slowly back down to that original starting position. Again, when we perform these, we want to perform them slow at first to really start strengthening the muscles, and then gradually increase the speed which we're performing the exercise based on what our return to sport criteria actually is. And then for a chop, it's the opposite of a lift. So anchor point is going to be up and above, and then we're going to bring our arms across our body and down towards the floor, and then back to that starting position, again, performing them slowly. And then the final diagnosis is pubic-related groin pain. And this is a little interesting because this diagnosis refers to the piece of cartilage here in between the two pelvic bones and some of the surrounding bone as well, but there's no muscle that the pain is actually attributed to in this diagnosis. So there's no muscle test to test for it or to provoke some of the symptoms. We're actually just looking for pain right at that pubic symphysis. And so when we look at treatment for pubic related groin pain, we actually treat it with the same program that we use for adductor related groin pain. And so the progression is just to gradually build up the strength of those adductor muscles, depending on the tolerance. So hopefully this helped to provide a little bit of clarity around the diagnosis of groin pain in athletes. If there's one that you want me to make a separate video on, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.